What I would say, well, I would say something like, um, imagine you had to listen to me give a lecture or an interview, listen to this interview, you forgot to turn off your phone and it's constantly beeping and there's Facebook messages and there's tweets and there's metamost messages, whatever. <laughs> and so the sort of willpower that you need to continue to listen to this interview or to my lecture mm -hmm. um, the cognitive control that you need that's that's what we study and we're really good at that mm -hmm. it's associated with a part of the brain that's really well developed but we fail to exert control to exert willpower all the time why is that what limits human cognition that's really the overarching to the question of our research program. Uh, maybe I can just sort of follow up on what we we're just what I was just saying about what um, what our overarching question is, which is about what what makes us fail so often. Not just if you have ADHD, but also you know our healthy adult brain fails to exert control all the time. And one reason for that, I believe, is that um, exerting control all the time mm. is a bad thing. Um, so what our brain does is basically decide whether it's good or bad to exert control and then makes a decision. Um, it, it, if you will, it regulates um, all kinds of computational trade-offs, including the trade-off between labor, working hard, you know, exerting mental effort, mental control, willpower, or letting go. Mm. And that is exactly what um, the large ascending neuromodulatory systems like dopamine, uh, but also noradrenaline, are important for. Um, and that is something that we're starting to, uh, to show, to demonstrate in the lab. Um, and we do that with um, a combination of techniques pharmacology, but also fMRI and chemical PET, where we measure these neuromodulators directly in the brain, so dopamine PET in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, th I guess um, there's a few things that we've shown uh, that I could say I'd be proud of. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do is we look at the effects of drugs that, uh, that change these neuromodulators, like dopamine and serotonin, so dopaminergic drugs. Uh, and what we've found is that these effects are extremely variable. Um, and the whole um, program so far has been focused on trying to elucidate the factors that, um, that determine whether you will benefit or not from these uh, drugs, these so-called cognitive enhancing drugs. Uh, and what we find is that the effects of these drugs depend on the baseline state of the system. So if you have low levels of dopamine, you get better. But if you have high levels of dopamine, you get worse. Um, so the effects of these um, dopaminergic drugs, which are often used as smart pills, brain pills, like mm -hmm. Ritalin, yeah. for example, for ADHD, but also uh, in academia, actually, in schools, mm -hmm. uh, their effects depend very much on their baseline state, baseline levels of dopamine. That's one thing. And the other thing we found is that the effects depend on where in the brain it acts. A lot of people are studying the neurophysiological signature of the cells that produce dopamine or noradrenaline mm -hmm. um, with electrophysiology, for example. But what we find is that the effect of these neuromodulators depends on where in the brain it acts. So in the prefrontal cortex, for example, dopamine has a very different effect from uh, the striatum compared with the striatum. Uh, so if we want to understand what a drug that acts on the system uh, does to human cognition, we have to take into account a number of factors. Uh, yeah. Just concretely, we are asking uh, fairly large groups of uh, 
of subjects to come to the lab. Mm -hmm. We measure their baseline level of, uh, of dopamine with PET. And then we ask them to undergo an MRI scan mm -hmm. uh, once after intake of a placebo pill, and once after intake of, for example, the dopaminergic drug. The com most commonly used drug is methylphenidate, which we, so we, we use that in the lab also. And we assess whether the effect of, in this particular case, Ritalin depends on how much dopamine you have in your brain measured with PET. And we see that that is the case. Yeah, um, so I think the first implication, larger implication of the work is it's still a pretty fundamental one. It's like a, a better understanding of um, of the mechanisms, neurochemical mechanisms of motivational and cognitive control, mm -hmm. uh, and then ultimately also a better in, understanding of how we might maximally exploit mental capital, our mental human mental capital, and that has possibly, uh, in the longer run, some implications for education. Um, I guess that would be the first domain. How do we promote cognitive control? How do we promote um, also creativity? You know, mm -hmm. Where this balance between focus and flexibility is also very important. Uh, and I guess the second domain is, is the clinic. Mm -hmm. um, so most concretely, we're working on building a a proxy model of dopamine synthesis capacity consisting yeah. of behavioral predictors mostly but also physiological predictors like spontaneous eye blink rate perhaps mm. and see how we can optimally combine all these predictors to provide a pragmatic a practical tool that can be used to predict how someone will respond to a dopaminergic drug um, yeah because so far there's been a whole load of studies, uh, including some of my own, suggesting that, for example, dopamine synthesis capacity is correlated with working memory capacity. And indeed, we see that dopaminergic mm -hmm. drug effects depend on working memory capacity. And of course, working memory capacity is much easier to measure in the lab yes, or in the sure. clinic yeah. than, than the PET scan to measure dopamine synthesis mm -hmm. capacity. Um, so if we can establish that these proxy measures of dopamine are equally good predictors of mm -hmm. drug effects, then that gives a, a pragmatic handle on tailoring drug treatment to the individual. Um, so that's a, a, a second promise. But I think we have to um, accept that this is not something that will be kind of in use within the next five years or so, for sure, yes.